Welcome back. Uh, check your uh, your calendars here. We're going a little bit long uh, tonight, but we are back with Alex Wagner, John Heilman, and Haas Minaj. A little wrap up of the evening. Before before we go any further, just uh, down in Florida, we've also found out that Bill Nelson has defeated Rick's. No, 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 no. no. no, no. Bill Nelson oh, was you... defeated by Rick Scott. Oh, no. Sorry, oh, no. sorry, oh, sorry. So the red card. I gotta say. The red card was the hint. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Steven, you uh, Bill an Nelson was defeated. Seriously. <laughs> what? It's La La Land. You yeah. pulled it. You pulled it La La Land. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Sorry. It's all right. Most people have gone to bed at this point anyway. <laughs> Everything's fine. And so we actually, would you have a photo of Rick Scott here celebrating? Here's a photo of him, shocked by the news, or happy, or hungry. It's hard to tell. Yeah. So there it is. It just it just hammers home what we already knew: uh, House for the Democrats, Senate for the Republicans. And Florida is a weird state. And Florida is a weird state. So, so, uh, so, what's it mean for America? I feel like we still call this place the United States of America, but right now it really does feel, pardon the cliche, like the divided states of America. The division that already existed is going to get steeper. And if possible, the road ahead may be even uglier than it has been thus far. I mean, in a few weeks, months, Robert Mueller is going to be dropping his report. And if there is any comedy on Capitol Hill, that will vanish as soon as there are there is evidence, in, in, investigative <laughs> evidence of wrong, potential wrongdoing, collusion, criminal behavior, we don't know. If, there, if, if evidence of wrongdoing, a collusion, or criminal behavior by the Trump administration means no comedy on Capitol Hill, don't worry, we'll, we'll have it all here. <laughs> we'll be fine. But, but is this, is this a, is, is it the House in one hand and the Senate in another, is this just sort of the carbuncle of the divided American populace coming to a head right now? Because it, it's the division made visible. You know, do Americans want this? Do we want a divided government, do you think? Do we just, are we so afraid of each other that we don't want anything to happen? We'd rather have nothing than something go wrong? Well, I don't know about that. I certainly think there's a, um, there, we had divided government at various times, you know, for a long time in our history, but right now there's clearly, what was driving what happened in the House was a bunch of people who were like, Donald Trump needs to have some, I don't want to say guardrails, he needs to put, have, be kind of wrapped in, wrapped in swaddling of some kind. Like he's, you know, he's, he's dangerous. Like there are a lot of people who think that Trump needs a, a balance, a counterbalance. So I don't think it's that people don't want to get anything done. I think it's more that there are a bunch of people who think that they're worried about what Trump can do, would do, will do, has tried to do with no restraint. Is, is the... Do you think that the Democrats being able to investigate um, the, the White House going to be part of the issue of the 2020 race? Is the 2020 race happening? Does it start right now? Yeah. Started, started about an hour yeah. ago. Um, 40, 47 minutes ago. Cory Booker just touched down in Des Moines. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren is doing a listening tour in New Hampshire. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Michael Avenatti is um, <laughs> setting up a, uh, a long bus swing with uh, Stormy Daniels through, wow. through the deeper provinces of something. Does it, but does it really start tonight? Yes. I know yeah. 100%. Yeah. For sure. Not, maybe not tonight. Tomorrow morning. I mean, it's not, it's in the, look, in the finest tradition, in, back in 2008, when Barack Obama decided to run for president, he had a meeting the day after the midterms and looked up and took the measure of the midterms, sat down with David Axelrod and David Plouffe and said, guys, we're going to go do this. And a lot of these Democrats who are running for president, and there, is a lot, there are a lot of them. I mean, it's like that band, this audience, everybody up here Hassan. is like times three is the number of people who are running for Democratic nomination. A lot of them have been thinking about it now for the last year, year and a half, really for two years. So they've just been waiting to see what was going to happen today and there are going to be, well, there'll be people in New Hampshire in the next, before Thanksgiving, filing. Well, th some of them were actually already on the campaign trail under the auspices of the midterms. Yeah. You saw Kamala yeah, Harris all on over the trail. The place. You saw Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth yeah. Warren, Cory Booker. They were all out there. That was testing. Well, two years ago, as I, I sat at this very desk and, 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 and yeah. talked to y you, John, yeah. uh, about what had happened, um, it felt sort of hopeless. Has Hassan, yes. uh, as, as, as a fresh eye to yeah. covering uh, politics live, yeah. do, do you have any hope? Does this give you, does this night give you some hope? For I took what a lot of hope. There, we had two female Muslim uh, members of Congress. That happened for the first time. Two Native American members of Congress. 
the first openly gay governor. That's huge. I think that's a, that's definitely a plus. And if this this Mueller mixtape's gonna drop, I've been waiting for it. <laughs> I can't wait. Remember, I can't wait a few Steven... months. I want it by Friday because I got big plans for the Advanced. weekend. And I have a brand new bottle of rye thanks to John Heilman. <laughs> We gotta go. Alex Wagner, John Heilman, Hassan Minaj. Thank you for being here, everybody. We'll be right back. Don't go away.